Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Life is indeed a delicate balance. Its mysterious operation requires a complex interplay of millions of different chemicals. Perfect structures spanning the nanoscale all the way up to the scale of your hand, your arm, your whole body. So many things have to work together in near perfect order to balance the miracle of life. Many consider life to be an emergent phenomenon, meaning it's something that is more than just the sum of its parts. Self-organizing large-scale order from very small-scale interactions. Things like ant colonies, fish schooling, and the synchronizing of firefly flashes would be examples of emergence. Life is quite old on planet Earth, and humans have had a lot of time to think about it. Where did it come from? Currently, the best explanation is the basic chemical elements essential to life, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, came together in the cauldron of the ancient oceans to form simple chemicals like amino acids. These elementary biochemicals took eons to meet one another to build basic structures like RNA and DNA. And then something strange happened. These chemicals decided they needed to reproduce, and reproduce they did. What's really interesting about this current theory is that it took almost forever for the building blocks to form. But once they did, life moved fast. It truly sprang up like a weed on planet Earth, forming countless varieties of species across five kingdoms, fought through millennia of fearsome apocalyptic events, asteroid impacts, solar flares, supervolcanoes, ice ages. Life, we think of it as a fragile, delicate thing, but it's also resilient and aggressive, a force of nature like fire or wind. It survived the vacuum of space. It can thrive in hot acids and sustain frozen in ice under mountains of rock. An extremophile is an organism that flourishes in environments considered deadly for most carbon-based life forms. Organisms that seem suited for extreme places beyond what is typical for planet Earth. These organisms have dominated the evolutionary history of the planet. Dating back to more than 40 million years, extremophiles have not only survived, they've become some of the most abundant life forms. In the 1980s and 90s, biologists found that some microbial life exhibited great flexibility for surviving in extreme environments. Niches that are acidic, extraordinarily hot, or under great pressure. Conditions generally considered inhospitable to complex organisms. There are viable bacterial spores found that are over 40 million years old. Scientists have figured out that these spores are somehow hardened to intense ionizing radiation. Some can survive in near perfect vacuum. That just seems impossible to me. It was discovered there are bacteria living in the cold darkness, in an underground lake buried a half mile deep under the ice in Antarctica, and even in the Marianas Trench, the deepest place in the Earth's oceans. Expeditions from the International Ocean Discovery Program found microorganisms in 120 degrees C sediment that is 1.2 kilometers below the seafloor in the Nankai Trow subduction zone. A key to the extremophile's adaptation is their amino acid composition. The way their proteins fold and structure themselves under these unimaginable environmental conditions. The study of the way these creatures have adapted is teaching scientists a lot about how to improve our own adaptability and even potential for new medical breakthroughs. Tom Gerentz from Ghent University in Belgium and colleagues have published research findings to show spores from a species of bacillus bacteria survived and were still viable after being heated to temperatures over 420 degrees Celsius, almost 800 degrees Fahrenheit. On April 29, 2013, scientists from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, funded by NASA, they reported that during spaceflight on the International Space Station, microbes 
seem to adapt to the space environment in ways, quote, not observed on Earth, and in ways that can lead to increased growth and virulence. One of my favorite episodes of MacGyver involves some bacteria hitching a ride on a satellite that crashes. The trip to space turned some benevolent microbes into stone-cold killers. The only way to kill them was to incinerate the whole lab. Of course, Angus MacGyver managed to save the day. In May 2014, scientists announced that numerous microorganisms, like Tersococcus phoenicius, may be resistant to methods usually used in spacecraft assembly clean rooms. It's not currently known if such resistant microbes could have withstood space travel or whether they're present on the Curiosity rover, which is now on planet Mars. In July of 2019, a scientific study of the Kid Mine in Canada discovered sulfur-breathing organisms, which live almost 8,000 feet below the surface. These bacteria can literally eat rocks, such as pyrite, as their regular food source. There are a whole bunch of different kinds of extremophiles. Perhaps the most familiar, anaerobes, organisms with optimal growth in the absence of oxygen. There are two types, faculative anaerobes and obligate anaerobes. A faculative anaerobe can tolerate conditions with and without oxygen, while an obligate anaerobe will die with the presence of even a low amount of oxygen. Acidophiles, organisms that with optimal growth, they thrive at pH levels of three and below. It's pretty acidic. And then there are alkalophiles, the opposite. And these are organisms with optimal growth at pH levels nine and above. Piezophiles, that's a great word. These are organisms with, they thrive in high pressures above 10 megapascals. That's 1,450 PSI. Hyperthermophiles, these little buggers grow the best at temperatures above 80 degrees Celsius, 176 degrees Fahrenheit. And the xerophiles, these microorganisms grow the best in environments with near zero water content. That's really strange. And then there are the polyextremophiles. And these are organisms that qualify as extremophiles under more than one category. These things are super tough. But the Vanadium Award for cutest extremophilic microorganism is the tardigrade. These little buggers are as amazing as they are charming. Tardigrades, known also as water bears or moss piglets, they're included in a phylum of eight-legged segmented microanimals. They were first described by the German zoologist Johann Gotze in 1773 who called them little water bears. In 1777, the Italian biologist Lorazzo Spallanzani named, named them tardigrada, which means slow steppers. They've been found everywhere on Earth's biosphere, from the mountaintops to the deep sea and mud volcanoes, from rainforest to the Antarctic. Tardigrades are among the most resilient animals known to mankind with individual species able to survive the most extreme conditions, such as exposure to extreme temperatures, extreme pressures, both high and low, air deprivation, radiation, dehydration, and starvation. Any one of these would kill most other life forms. Tardigrades have survived even exposure to outer space, and they're the opposite of rare, with about 1,300 known species they're easy to find in many ponds and lakes all around the world, and they can be easily spotted with just a compound light microscope. The term extremophile is sort of anthropocentric. We judge habitats based on what would be considered extreme for human existence. We call them extremophiles. But what's extreme is only a matter of perspective. So many things in life and in nature are about perspective. I remind myself of that. When things get uncomfortable, difficult, maybe even unbearable, it's helpful to think of these fascinating creatures who somehow learn to go beyond just surviving hardship and adversity to embracing it and actually loving it. Thank you very much. I'm Chris Rankin, and this is Vanadium.